All right, boys and girls, the question this time around is the question, and I got asked it by at least five or six people. You know who you are. The question this time around is, what is the meaning of life? And the, uh, the truth is, I'm tempted to say love. I mean, love is what we ought to be concerning ourselves with. Love ought to be the, the reason that we do the things that we do. We talk about this all the time. And of course, uh, love makes the world go around. And the gospel in one word is love. And, and all you need is love and so on and so forth. It's a great answer. But on the other hand, I'm not sure it's the answer to the question of what is the meaning of life. Because on a certain level, love is kind of meaningless. Now, hang on for a second. When I say that, what I mean is that love is not something that you can describe in purely intellectual terms. There is no specific intellectual meaning of love. And you know that if you've ever fallen in love with someone and then tried to explain to your friends and family why they're the one who does it for you. Love is more than what you can explain in intellectual terms. And in fact, that's why it's so wonderful. And when you think about it, all of the best things, all of the things that make our hearts sing, all of the things that really make us human, all of the things that define us, all of the great things in the world are things that are absolutely meaningless. What's the meaning of, of beauty? What's the meaning of, of your favorite meal? <laughs> the reason that you like your favorite song is something that you can't really explain. And in fact, if you were a computer program, your favorite song would be thought of as a, as a glitch. Over and over again, we're reminded that the universe doesn't fit between our ears. And so maybe asking what's the meaning of life isn't really the most important question. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that we should be looking for meaning. I think that the things that you and I commit ourselves to should make sense to our head as well as to our heart. I think all too often, especially when we're talking about spiritual stuff, people are asked to hang their intellect at the door. And I think that feeling gets a lot of people and do a lot of trouble. I think that uh, a little bit of common sense with your spiritual pursuits would be really good for all of us and it would keep a lot of us from getting in trouble. So go after meaning, but what I want you to know is that meaning comes second. Proof comes second. Validation comes after you put yourself out there. The story I like to tell is, imagine that you were a farmer and you went out into an open field and you said, well, there's no crops here. I'm not going to start farming. I need proof. Well, obviously it doesn't work that way. First, you do your part. First, you put yourself out there. First, you plant and you fertilize and you water. You do whatever it is that farmers do. You strap on your overalls and you go out and you do. And then after you've done everything that you can do, you step away in trust, in belief, in faith, in the process, and then you get your proof. Then you get your validation. Meaning comes after you step into the flow. So maybe meaning is a beautiful thing, but it's not the most important thing. What you're really looking for is the experience of life. What lets you experience the truth? What feels like the truth? Follow that and then you'll get your meaning. And so my question to you is, how can you commit yourself to something beautiful, big or small? How can you give yourself to that process today? What can you do? That's the beginning of something really meaningful. So I want to thank you for sending in the questions. Please keep them coming. Please keep telling your friends about it. Hit that share button and hit that subscribe button. It's good for all of us. Thank you and take care of yourself.